YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about fodder and potentially investing in it today on Thursday and selling tomorrow on Friday. We're gonna look at future stars. Some of you guys might be, a few of you have been asking me if you should be investing in them. So I'll give my two cents on that. And we're gonna talk about road to the final trading. I'm gonna kinda of just sum it up. I know the cards aren't out yet, but I'm gonna tell you guys how it kinda of goes. They're live cards, it's pretty fun to trade with, but there's some things you might wanna know so you don't kinda of make mistakes and lose coins trading with those cards. But before we get into all that, we have to talk about content today on Thursday. If you wanna have millions of coins in FIFA 23 like me, go to u7buy.com for cheap, fast, and reliable FIFA coins. Make sure you use code TEDDY at checkout to get 5% off your order. Link is in the description down below below content today on thursday is like it always is we get rewards we get marquee matchups and we get a player sbc sometimes it's not always a player sbc but we did get one we got the hamed hamed treore um last future star card that we're going to be getting it's it's nothing really impressive so there's that 84 plus times five refreshing and the icon refreshes tomorrow and the marquee matchups if i can find it also this spc right here the campaign player pick refreshes saturday so it's not icon and campaign player pick refreshing on friday i thought it was going to be two at the same time and i was like dang that's going to be nice but marquee matchups we've got another token in there in the frankfurt versus Werder bremen we got all this blah 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 i think for trading Premier League center attacking mids went crazy because of this formation requiring three center attacking mids. Whenever that formation gets into marquee matchups, they do so good. And I mentioned German center forwards just because this one had the token as well. But I was a little skeptical of doing marquee matchup trading this week just because all gold commons were like six, 650. It's expensive. Usually when I'm doing it, I'm buying them for like 350, 400. So that was kind of annoying and held me off a little bit there now let's just talk about fodder really quick i mentioned it a little bit in the previous video i don't want to go crazy over it but i was selling a lot of my fodder as you know my coins are up i was i think i got up to like 15 16 mil and i made it so i only i got rid of all the 84s i was actually making a little bit of profit there and i have 88s and 85s left that's pretty much all i left myself with because the icon refreshes tomorrow and i'm like you know what they'll probably go up a little bit and i'll either be able to break even or make a little bit of coins i'm hoping at least break even because you know the icon refreshes people are going to do it fodder the fodder should go up when the icon refreshed 88s were like 36 37 000 coins and right now they're down at like 31k which is pretty crazy and you'll see 86s in here as well and i was looking at it and i was Seeing when the icon came out and trying to see what fodder did best, and it looked like 86s did the best. The 86s went to 20,000 coins. And right now, do, do I think they'll go back to the prices they were before? Like, do I think 88s will go to 37K again? Not really. 85s went up to like 14K. Do I think that'll happen? Mm, maybe, but I really don't see it happening. But you know, they can rise a decent amount. We saw it last week as well. Thursday was the low for a lot of the fodder. And then when that hero player pick refreshed, we saw that fodder actually go back up in price on Friday. So we're just kind of doing that same move. It is risky. You know, it is a risky move, but I'm like, there's 16K down a decent amount. We have an SBC coming out tomorrow that's refreshing. It's going to require them. I'll buy them for 16K. I don't see them really dropping a crazy amount. But I don't know if necessarily they'll go back up to 20k. If they go to like 18,000 coins, I'm making over a thousand coins per card. I'll take that. Why not? It's cool. I'll take a little bit of profit. And if they don't really rise that much, I'll probably just end up breaking even. They go to like 16.5, 16.75, 17k, anywhere around there. But yeah, I've been picking up 86s for 16,000 coins. It's pretty easy on bid. Even snipes. I literally just sat on stream watching the. Uh, what was it? Barcelona versus Manchester United. Pretty good game, by the way. I think Barca should have had a pen. I think that Fred handball, he moved his arm like that. That should have been a pen. You guys got lucky. Got lucky. But um, yeah, I was just sitting there like casually sniping 86s at 16K. It was really easy to do. So 16,000 coins, that's the max I would pay. Hopefully they go like 17, 18K. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, 88s can go back to like 34K. 
maybe 35 if I'm lucky. I'm thinking 85. I don't know what's, I don't like the 85s. I'm, it's weird. I, there were a lot of requirements for 85s this week with the 84 plus times five, refreshing every day with the icon, with the campaign, a lot of 85 type requirements, but they barely moved. It's kind of, I don't know, weird. I think it was, that's like three SBCs requiring them. I don't know. I think it's because like the cheapest way of doing it sometimes is using a higher rated card and then filling it with like 84s and stuff. So that does kind of hurt it sometimes. So I just wanted to mention the fodder, what I'm doing. I didn't want to go too crazy talking about it. I'm holding some of that fodder, waiting for Friday, tomorrow, obviously, and hoping I see a bit of a bounce when that icon refreshes. Now onto the next one. I want to talk about future stars. A lot of these future star cards are actually down a lot today with marquee matchup supply, with reward supply. We have, let me see how these names are. Malassi is one that's down. Malassi is down at the price that he was basically when he came out. He's 345K right now. It's pretty damn low for him. Where do I pull it up? I'm just I'm flipping right now, trying to get the future stars up. Future stars team two. There we go. I had it on the tab right next to it. My webcam's in the way of the tab, so I can't see sometimes. So, one card that's down a little bit is the Liverpool youngster Carvalho. I don't know his full name. What is his full name? I, I want to make sure I choose the right one. Fabio Carvalho. Carvalho. However you want me to say it. I don't know. All right. This kid has been chilling around like 48, 49, 47,000 coins. And right now he's down at 44K. I know one of my fellow trading streamers, Rick. He has been buying this guy and lazy listing him for like 49K, somewhere around there. And he's been getting a ton of sales. And I mean, investment wise, I'm not sure how crazy I am with him. But like he is the lowest he has been since he's been out. He was down on Monday at like 46, 47K, but he's 44K right now. So if there was any time for you to be thinking, hey, I want to invest in future stars, you know, it would be now. I'm personally not doing it. Uh, what else do we got? Melier was one of the cards that I liked a lot. I like this dude because he was fodder price, but also he's a French goalkeeper in the Premier League. We have an Anton, Antoni, Antonio. I don't know. Is it Anthony or Antonio? It's Anthony. Anthony Martial. Best football player in the world. This card will link to that Martial. He's what, 30, about 31K? Can I even buy it? No, I can't right now. Um, I mean, when you look at what he is, he's, he's a French goalkeeper in the Prem. It's a good nation. He's one of the best goalies in the Prem. He's huge as well. And he'll link to the Martial card. And if anyone wants to leak like Ligue 1, so like Mbappe into the Prem somehow, this is one of the cards that can help you do that. So I like him. And if you look at someone like Butlin before, Butlin was kind of just like this dude. Butlin was like, what, 34K? And if you look at Butlin, he went up to almost, I think, 70K. I think he was like 35k and he went up to almost like 70,000 coins, but he, he's back down in price. Ever, he went up to 75k. He's back down in price ever since I think the uh, Melier maybe got leaked or something like that. He's down at like 54 now. But yeah, I think out of packs, he has, he has decent potential. And uh, the other one was Joe Willick. I like Joe Willick a lot. He links to a lot of Prem cards. This dude is Hullet Gang. This Joe Willick is a Hullet Gang Premier League English card. And he's basically fodder price. What is he, 25k? He's below 25,000 coins. So that's pretty damn cheap. If you want to buy these cards for your team, I'd probably say, you know, do it now. If you want to invest in them, you can. My only thing is I like them. Don't get me wrong. I like them a lot and I think they're pretty solid. But the only issue I have with investing in some of these future stars is that the next promo is Road to the Final. And Road to the Final is a pretty hype promo. They're live cards and trading with those is going to be really fun so i don't know if i want to wait like a week or two with holding these cards out of packs it could do good but i don't know if i want to wait a week or two i kind of want to trade with some road to the final cards i was saying i was telling twitch i might have it be like yo if you guys on youtube get this video to like 271 likes i'll pick one road to the final card and i'll invest all my coins into them i kind of want to do it I, I like doing gambles like that i enjoy it i think it's fun so maybe I'll do something like that. But yeah, it's up to you if you want to buy the future stars. Definitely if you want them for your team. A lot of them are at some really low prices. I keep getting these spam messages from like banks saying, you need to look at your security. I don't even have Citizens Bank. Too many scammers out there. Don't fall for that stuff. Okay, don't do it. 
Now, road to the final trade. Right, before we get into road to the final trading, actually, I want to mention something. If you guys are on a low budget, you can do this pretty much every single week with gold commons. They're really easy to trade with. They're up in price because of an upgrade SBC, the player pick. So they're 600 coins. You can easily get them on bid for, I don't know what you can get them for. I haven't really been trying it and I can't bid right now, but you can see that there's a lot of supply. And when there's a lot of supply like this, it's always on Thursday, especially with the marquee matchups and the rewards, you can get a ton of deals on bid for cheap and then just list them up for like 600 coins. It's a great way if you're on a low budget to make coins, you're like, really, you tell me to make 100, 200 coins per card. If you're broke, you're broke. There's no like secret method. You got to get your coins up. And then once you have your coins up, you can start like investing and then just chilling. Like you have 500K now, you can send 500K into something and double it in a week pretty easily. So you need to get to that price range first before, you know, before you can start doing the investing. You gotta, you gotta do these little trades. Is that even gonna go on bid? You, you see what I mean? There's a lot of deals right there. So you can bid through, I'd say the max I would pay is probably like 400, maybe 450, and then just list them all up for 600. Some might sell for more, but I might be a pain in the ass and not really worth your time to research every card. Just fly through on bids and list for 600. Like if this guy sells for 300 coins, he sells them for 600. That's pretty much doubling your coins on the card. I highly recommend you do that if you're on a low budget. Now, Road to the finals aren't out yet, but we're going to talk about trading with them. I'm going to go over some simple things that you guys should know when it comes to trading with live cards. And we're going to talk about in the past with live cards, what we've seen. So road to the final trading when cards come out and it's a big team, say like, I don't know, Real Madrid or a big team. What, what else is there? Manchester City, stuff like that. When it, I don't know who is playing who, but if it's a team that's really big and they're expected to win, that's the key thing. Are they expected to win? If the favored team, you're expected to win. If a card comes out for that team, the win is usually priced into the card already. So say a Real Madrid card comes out. Alaba is leaked. There's a bunch of leaks, by the way. Foot Sheriff leaked almost like everything. Uh, so some decent cards. Nothing that's like mind blowing, but there's actually some pretty decent cards in this promo. So say with Alaba, the win is probably priced into his card already. And if they do win, don't expect like a crazy, crazy rise. You actually, if they do win, you could actually see the card go down in price because so many people invested in Alaba expecting them to win. Like, oh my God, this guy's, he's easily going to win. He's going to get his upgrade and he's going to go up a ton in price. So, so many people buy and they actually go down in price after they win. That's something that can happen and you should keep an eye out for that. So if you're trading with a card that's expected to win, you're usually better off getting in early on the card and then selling into the hype of the game. That's usually one of the better ways to go. But then, you know, the other way around is if it's a team that's not expected to win. So say like, let me just look at the UCL games. UCL games, say like uh, maybe Frankfurt or like Porto. Porto's up against Inter or Leipzig. Leipzig's a perfect example. Leipzig up against Manchester City. A lot of people would think Leipzig would lose. So. The win's not priced into that card. So say Leipzig, boom, they actually take the lead or they're winning. Whatever Leipzig card is out would fly. They go nuts. And examples of that is with like Japan in the World Cup. The Path to Glory Japan card. What was it? Kim Min Jae? The dude flew. Was it Kim Min Jae? It was either Kim Min Jae or it was Aito. It may have been Aito. They flew though. They went up a ton. And if you look at cards that are expected to win, when you look at France and you look at Argentina, when they actually got their upgrades, they were so expensive. And before the final even came out, they came crashing down in price because so many people invested in them thinking that they were gonna go far and win. They actually crashed a ton in price. So, you know, that's another case of selling beforehand into the hype of a game can definitely be something you wanna do. And, um, so there's that, the expected win end with the cards that are expected to win. There's a side with the cards, the underdogs. Underdogs, if they do pull through, they go up a crazy amount. And the thing with the underdogs as well, they don't drop that much. If you see panic selling on an underdog player, like say Leipzig don't actually win, but they have like a really stacked card that got a promo card. Like Warner, say Warner gets a nasty card or Simicon. And there's a lot of panic selling. You could probably buy that panic because no one necessarily expected them to win. 
So that's something definitely that you can do. And you can try tr doing that same thing with the cards that were expected to win, like a Manchester City card, but they're expect a, a big drop off, like a big dip in price. Now, um, trading live as well. If you're watching the games, PSG versus Real Madrid is one of the perfect examples. Gareth Bale had a Champions League live card last year. And when... I don't have any of the pictures up. So, like, I don't even have anything I can show you guys. So, when Real Madrid came back against PSG, we saw Gareth Bale go up a ton. He was, he was down bad because PSG were winning. And then, boom, Real Madrid comeback. Massive, massive rebound. What am I going to put on my transfer list? I'm going to put these guys up for now. I'll just do this while I talk. So, trading live. If you're watching the games you know, give it a shot. If you see a team down or if you see like, oh, they just scored, go ahead and buy the card that's making the comeback or that just took the lead. That's definitely something that you can do if you are watching the game. So that's basically it with Road to the Finals. Understand one of the biggest things. I think that's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is if a team is expected to win. I have all the time. Yo, Teddy, uh, my once to watch card looked like he was getting upgraded. Why now that he got his upgrade, is he going down in price? It's kind of the same thing with once to watch cards. They're live. They get the upgrade. Everyone invested in the ones. Say it's once to watch. Who the heck is once to watch? I don't know. Talisa or something. Not Talisa. That's a terrible example. Basically, a once to watch card is live. People are like, oh, he's getting the upgrade. I'm going to buy him. And the upgrade comes out. And then everyone that invested in it because they thought of that list the card up at the same time. And it comes crashing down. So i just telling you guys, you know, be careful with that. I'll obviously be streaming and kind of like posting YouTubes on the stuff youtube videos on the cards so i can try to help you guys through it but we have a really fun weekend and week next week of trading it's champions league it's europa league it's conference league conference league and europa league cards by the way especially if it's a big team and they have easy games those are those are great for trading because it's almost like a guaranteed win and i like those if you want to hold them almost for like a while especially conference league there's an atal i don't know how good nice is or however you say their name but atal right back Ligue 1. what a card and he's leaked and he's going to be crazy. So I'm, I'm really excited for that card. But that's it. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments section. If you have Amazon Prime as well, we have a VIP trading Discord. We have a VIP trading Discord. If you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to my Twitch channel for free. Anyone that's a sub to my Twitch channel gets access to our VIP trading Discord. Just type exclamation point link, L-I-N-K, in my Twitch chat. And it describes everything. But uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.